Okay, everyone, we are back on our way to do the second drive of today. 11.3.3. It's interesting that arrow is pointing that way. Actually, it's pointing this direction. Um, and as you can see, the map data still hasn't updated. It needs to override when it has the arrow that points this direction. It needs to override the map data. I'm like, hey, map data, you're going the wrong direction. And it just needs to override it and, and make the car reroute itself the correct way. I'm sure that's in the works. But I just have to note it until it's fixed. So, so we're gonna have to wait for this to reroute properly, and then we can enable it here. Okay. Yeah. So it's really annoying that it does that in between drives. It really does need to get further left in this route. So if you look, there's just so much room right here. The fortunate the car behind me is also turning left, but I think the car behind them wants to go sh straight or, or right, potentially. And so it's, uh, it just kind of gets in the way. Like I could disengage, but it's not really necessary. Okay, I'm pressing accelerate a little bit just to get out of everyone's way. See, these type of scenarios, wow, it's really, really going. Interesting, okay. Um, and just to get out of everyone's way, it's just, those scenarios really just frustrate me because it's just like, I know I'm annoying other people. I'm like, I don't have to care about it, but I like to be at least a reasonable, courteous driver. Wow, that tr truck also, to me, looked like it was on my side of the road. Interesting. Um, must have been an optical illusion going up over the hill. You know, it does on the roundabout again. So again, I don't really expect any drastic driving behavior changes with 11 knot three at three. I think it's just will be look at the draw basically. Does the car, you know, get the right traffic scenario to, you know, uh, basically get lucky? But that roundabout was actually really good just because it had the weight on the cars in front of me. It did the and all the speed felt really good. Now, if it's going in on its own, it's always a little bit too timid and slows down too much. But because it already was slowed down because of the people in front of me, then it was great. Okay, so it was braking as if this car was going to cut out in front of me. And it made it look like I brake checked the truck behind me, fortunately. So I had to press the accelerator for that. see how it gets in this lane so this is something I it just needs to cross the double yellow right here. it needs to go see uh, this wrong lane what it does is it waits until the very last second and then kind of pulls in and just like stays halfway in the lane like if I pull up this whole thing right here you can see wow that would actually worked really well kind of wish it didn't go through the puddle um, but um, yeah, that worked uh, quite well. It seems like a lot of hesitancy is back with uh, cars. Uh, they're all like, yeah, like that. That car pulled out and it braked for it, even though the car in front of me was in front of that, uh, in front of that one. There seems to be a lot more hesitancy for cars pulling out. It seems to be more cautious. They seem to do this every single time on the point releases. Uh, to where they make it a little, just a little bit more cautious um, Just for some reason I I guess just to reduce potential um, Accident risk I guess but just to keep people aware the, the problem is When you brake check people like that behind you you have a higher chance of rear-ending someone or have someone rear in than you Won't be your fault because if you know proper follow distance from the person behind you, but still it's courteous to not do that I handled that really well right there every single time this turn is definitely improved for version 11 overall that's I can like noticeably improved every single time I've done it it's been really good 
Okay. They kind of, instead of like smoothly getting over, just like, mm, <laughs> it just like jerks the wheel over instead of smoothly getting over. It needs to wait for this car. And it's good to go. Interesting. I don't know why it decided to like get all the way over to the right and then get back over. Really interesting. I'm going to quickly go in here, everyone. And then uh, we'll be back out to finish up this route. And we're back, everyone. Let's see if we can actually get it enabled this time. No. Okay. I want to see if it'll stay on the left side of the road. See, it's getting into the parking spaces here. Then it swerves back out of the parking spaces. Now that it realizes those are parking spaces. And see if it makes the good angle for this turn. And it does. Great. At the last couple of versions of times I've gone through here, I uh, couldn't enable it before it would make it to that turn to it messed up. Or didn't do it quite right. When you enable it right before it has to do something, it just doesn't... It doesn't prepare correctly. Okay, so it waited for those pedestrians right there. And now it can proceed, and that's good. Good behavior. And now we can keep on going on this route. We're just going straight all the way to the very end of Main Street here. This is an interesting situation. Got that they cross in front, and really, I need to press just a little bit myself just to tell it to go up. And now, this car in front of me is moving, so the car is going to continue going. Going at this time, definitely is busier going down Main Street than my normal time. It would be about 30 minutes to an hour earlier normally coming down here. It can make a big difference in terms of how much traffic there is, especially on a nice day. Obviously, it was raining earlier this morning, and it cleared out very quickly to a nice, clear, sunny day. It's going to be about as good as weather as you can possibly ask for here. Okay, so it should only stop at that yield if there's a person trying to cross, or if there's a car close enough to where it can't make it all the way past the yield, and then it needs to go forward like we just did. So those are the type of little things that are like, I think they can, that can be fixed, I think. that That's what it's going to take to have a robotax. You have to do those things correctly. I mean, I guess technically it could stop there and wait until the car in front, like, a, people would be annoyed, but it, it would be legal, right? It's just, I don't, I guess that doesn't technically stop a robotax as long as it's safe and not against the law. I don't think there's any reason it would have an issue just staying too far back. It just, besides, it would annoy people. Okay, and I didn't plan far enough ahead to go re reroute it. I wish you could route to this parking lot right here, Edward Street. It won't route there no matter how much. Wow, and it's a red light. This light does not stay long enough. Okay, we'll wait one more time. Okay, let's see if it turns and gets in the correct lane. This person decided to turn and didn't have a blinker on. Nice. Needs to get over to the left. Hey, that's a really good maneuver. And this car's probably in my way. Okay. So, that's the end of this drive, everyone. Did we get zero disengagements? Well, I don't even know. It was a good drive, nonetheless. I honestly don't know if we got zero disengagements, everyone. Um, but, yeah, I think it was good. Obviously, to me, no worse than 11.1, which is the last time we did this. But um, if you have a question for me, put it down below, and we'll do our next test to Aldi after this. And that'll wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching, everyone.